It's beautiful. Good morning, my beautiful friends. How are y'all doing? This is a wonderful Sunday at sunrise. We are up and making it happen. The I just thank God for this opportunity. <laughs> Yesterday I was. This is Sunday at sunrise, and I'm going to, before I tell you about my exciting Saturday, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for making this day possible. I was hesitant and sending out our invitation for today because I wasn't sure I was going to feel, you know, well enough. And um, as God would have it, we prayed our way through it. <laughs> we prayed our way through it. Oh, yes. Thank you for my husband, my daughter, for taking care of me. They sure did. And you know, I didn't feel well because I didn't eat. <laughs> and if I don't eat, they know she's not feeling good. But at least be hungry. Even when I fast, I think about it. I wasn't even thinking about it. So it is so good to see Miss Bullock this morning. Oh, it's great to see you. I see you up and at it. Queen Howard, up and at it. Ms. Jones, up and at it. Yes, indeed. Mike Rob, up and at it. <laughs> Poor thing. Yes, indeed. We're talking about grace. We're talking about showing grace, uh, approaching conflict. How are you, Ms. Woodson? We're, we are approaching um, life's uh, life. How do we approach things that happen in life? There's so much conflict going on. And um, one of our members is traveling internationally. And yesterday she was telling me about that um, there's war going on in her area and that she's in. And she, um, she was you know, saying that it's just kind of you know, scary. And I said, the truth of the matter is there's war everywhere. There's war inside our mind, you know, there's war at work, there's war, you know, we might not be dropping bombs on one another, but just too often we are at war. And the word like helps us create a life of peace. And, um, but when she um, hit me with that text about, you know, pray because I'm not sure what's going on here and how it's going to be. And it's, you know, something that um, we all don't realize how, how vulnerable we are to different conflicts in the world. Just like there was a colonial pipeline that um, some computer hackers came in and stopped a pipeline from providing um, gas to some of the Southern states. You know, that's a conflict. It goes deeper than what we can truly, truly see. But I, I, I wanna hear some good mornings. <laughs> good morning, can I get a good morning? Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. I don't know, thank you so much. You know, when the mic is open, you gotta give the good morning. You gotta give the good morning. When you, when, look, when you can, always do it. Good morning. Ms. Woodson, you gonna say good morning? See. Good morning. Oh, Miss Bullock, thank you so much. <laughs> Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, Miss Charles. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. It's that not so good. You know, just say, just say good morning. <laughs> Reach out to somebody. That is somebody that's actually even watching us because I share this with our um, social media page, and they need the good morning too. And I don't even get to say it back to them. So I'm encouraging them right now that if you want to be get your good morning on and get your 7 a.m. Sunday at sunrise really started, because I'm telling you how you start your Sunday makes a difference in how you start your entire week. Then make sure you go to Afroeconomics.com, the website, go into the events and register so that you get all of the invites, no matter what. You're welcome to attend. Now let's um, let's just start with a, a prayer. 
Dear Lord, it is hard to be kind sometimes, mm, especially when others are mean to us. But being unkind only makes the situation worse. Dear Lord, let your spirit help us to resolve the issues that we have among ourselves. As we meet and discuss our differences, Lord, help us to show kindness to one another, just the way Jesus was kind to others and sinners. Remove pride, Lord, from our hearts and help us to see each other as children of God who are dearly loved and forgiven for our heaven, by our heavenly Father. We are forgiven. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. Dear Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's look um, deeper. We're talking about conflict and resolving conflict through grace. Grace. What a beautiful thought. What a beautiful word. Like if, if we just look, I'm going to look up just exactly... I'm going to tell you exactly what grace, how it is defined in relation to resolving conflict through grace. And if you look up grace, divine grace comes up. And divine grace, it comes up under religion. It says divine grace is a theological term present in many religions. It has been defined as the divine, the, the, it has been defined as the divine influence which operates in humans to regenerate and sanctify, to inspire virtuous impulses and to impart strength to endure, and to endure trial and resist temptation. And as an individual virtue or excellence of divine origin. Excellence of divine origin. I can just take their last, like, so resolving conflict through excellence of divine origin. We've been given instruction. We've been given instruction through the word of God in chapter 18 of Matthew, verses 21, um, 15 through 20. And in verse 15 of the 18th chapter of Matthew, it says, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. Now we're talking about resolving conflict you're mad at your brother or sister not literally that not to literally be your brother or sister you're mad at someone you care about go and point out their fault just between the two of you just between the two of you if you if, if they listen to you you have won them over if you listen, if they listen to you. So I, when, I, when I was reading this chapter 18 of Matthew 15 through 20, I immediately thought about um, the conflict resolution that became very, the conflict that became very public between um, Kirk Franklin and his son. And um, it was put on social media but the first problem was that Kirk had a friend of his on the phone. See, because our word here says, if your brother or sister, so that should be, could be child, sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. That third person shouldn't have been on the phone yet. So that they can just talk. It probably wouldn't have gotten to social media if it was just between him and his son. But if they don't listen to you, take one or two others along so that every matter you have established by the testimony of two or three witnesses, others. Now these others have to not be people that laugh and joke as was happening with the third person on that conversation and kind of escalated it even more. But the people that, that you have as what they have to be people who are witnessing what you're saying you have a problem with, with the other person, that they witness it. So that will more likely be the, you know, his, the stepmother 
or the mother or someone, but it has to be others who are witnesses, not someone who is just a bias and your friend, your posse, your people that are going to automatically put the other person on defense. So first it says we need to resolve resolution one-on-one. -on -one. Then get witnesses involved. Did anybody see what happened? Did anybody actually see what happened? And then uh, in chapter seven, in verse 17, it says, if they still refuse to listen, then tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, if they refuse to listen even to the church, what? Them as it would. Hurry a, up. I don't feel so. And the. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a meet her. Meet her. I'm going to treat her like a pagan. <laughs> look, she's like, how she mute my phone? You were making noise. Treating them like, look, what I was supposed to first tell her one on one. Your phone is loud. <laughs> then bring witnesses. Did y'all hear that phone? Yep. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. That's right. So then if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or tax collector. Mm. <laughs> um, they feel some kind of way about the tax collectors. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. See, that's about moving past it. You take it to the church, they refuse. It says then just treat them like, you know, they're a person that you know, but that's it. No, don't hold, don't have vengeance. Don't be attached to it. Don't allow it to pull you down. You know, we are given instructions. There are so many things if you think, if you think about it. And then and then and then in Matthew chapter um 18 verses 19 and 20 says, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. So I'm saying, if you have a conflict that you are trying to resolve right now, we can decide that that conflict will be resolved. That's the power that it says. Truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. God is with us now. So let's look at some scripture-based ways to address conflict with grace. Addressing conflict with grace, that divine grace, that divine excellence that only can come from God. First, first, Let's, let's consider that we've been told to make it right with others first to be right with God. So you can't like go around with these huge chips on your shoulder and think that God is going to be able to clearly talk to you and give you your life purpose and help you with your daily functioning if you are still at conflict with other people. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, now, this is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 through 24. If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, a conflict, leave your gift at the altar, first go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. So that's saying, you got to get it right. You got to get it right with them first so that God can receive your connection so he can hear your prayers so he can get your message you feel that yes, make it right 
with others first. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. A second point is to put your pride aside. Put your pride aside. <laughs> Almost impossible when you're in conflict, right? Because mm -hmm. you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. But where there is, and this is in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10, it says, where there is strife, there is pride. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Plain and simple. That's all we got to do is take the pride out and the strife will be gone. It's not against you. It's not about you. It's not about you. They're just hurting. You know, create, you know, put your pride aside and just look at the situation, you know? And, and, and then my third point is to like, don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. I, 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 re, I remember so many situations where you, you know, that conflict could be resolved by submitting ourselves to God. You know, by submitting ourselves to God. In James chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, it says, who causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? <laughs> you desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you do not get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Wow. This is powerful. Just, you know, let me just read that. I got to read that again. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? It's your selfishness. And then he goes on, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the pride, the proud. This is it. I'm you know, I'm making this up. This is James chapter four. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Mm. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. If this not fun, most people nowadays don't even want to do it. Everything mm -hmm. has to be connected to some sort of worldly fun. They won't even listen to this discussion or consider conflict resolution through grace because they might actually have to take some time and really listen and check yourself, which is my fourth point. Who wants to check themselves? But conflict resolution can include a fourth point of just checking yourself per first. Peace inside protects us from the outside world. We don't have to worry about the world approving us when you're at peace with yourself, when you're, if, check yourself, be at peace with yourself. Don't go around like trying to point out what well, that's wrong. They did that to me. That's what, that's what, that's what the problem is. It's all you, you know, Matthew chapter seven, verse three through five. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eyes and pay no attention to the plank? 
in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Check yourself first. <laughs> That's a major principle of Afroeconomics too. Check yourself, be accountable. In addition to the first principle, which is your relationship with God. But we do, you know, this is conflict. But if I start with me, like, you know, what can I do? What can I do to make this situation better? Now, I've, I've looked at a lot of situations where I know where I address now as I become closer to God, that I address the whole situation differently than I did when I didn't have, you know, that, that strong, accountable relationship with God. Like, whenever there was conflict, it, it, I, I, my first thought wasn't approaching it with grace. You know, it was, I better shut this down because they're going to, they're going to, you know, take advantage of me. They're going to think I'm weak. They're going to think, you know, they can get over. They're going to think you're, you know, you just, all you're thinking about is the world. But as you develop a closer relationship with God, you, you focus on wanting God to be at peace with you because the world's perception of you is generally much higher when you're farther away from your relationship with God. Mm. The farther you go, the more likes you'll get, the more acceptance you'll get, you know, because that's, you know, that's what it, that's what it gets. It, it wants more people like them that want to have more people. They want to, they want to feel like, yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all doing the same thing. Why is this person out there saying that I need to check myself first? I want to blame it on somebody else. It feels better. No, but, but it's not, you know, that's not God's plan for us though. They gave us that, that we can, you know, say, well, and this doesn't mean that we should even feel that things that came that were in our past, that this is something where we have to say, oh, you know, everything needs to, um, this is not, this is not about like, making up or getting someone back or anything like that. I mean, or bringing them back into your life. This discussion God's talking about is as we move forward in life, don't hold any grudges with the past, but that past is past, but don't allow it to rob your peace. God has forgiven us for that. We have repented for that. We are new, we are resilient, we are moving forward. We don't have to get the world to accept us for past acts. God has already forgiven us for that. So it's about moving forward, not judging others, checking ourselves, becoming stronger as an individual ourselves so that we can be that example that the world needs of a strong relationship with God and that is genuine and not judgmental and that is true and that it's loving and it's peaceful and it expresses grace because all too often people move away from God because they're thinking that we're going to judge them in some way and we're not you know but we've all been exposed to that where you know people make you feel like well if you're not this then you're not if you don't go to that type of church or if you don't go to that religion or if you don't go to this then you're you know that's not that's not what God told us that's not you know it's not in the word that's not in the word mm -hmm. it said you know make it right with others first here say with what type of people the word says make it right with others all others first doesn't mean compromise, doesn't mean go along with what, if they're doing something wrong that you don't agree with. It's just saying, don't let the grudge continue to happen without at least making an attempt to resolve the conflict. Put your pride aside, because where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Humility, it takes humility 
to take advice. And don't be selfish. And then we moved forward to check yourself. And that was out of Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 through 5. And then my fifth, my fifth point was to listen and be flexible and be mature. You know, listen, that oft, often, and this, and this is in James chapter 1, verse 7, uh, verse 19. Often the people who need love the most, not the um, deserve it the least. But in, in James chapter 1, verse 19, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Even though it is hard. So when I think about that the people who need love the most often deserve it the least, but we still have to give it to them. You know, especially in the COVID situation, I have seen so many people um, create, you know, allow the world to create a bitterness in them. People that are normally kind, cool, collected, you know, and it's not okay. It's not okay. So, but at first I, I, I approached it. I was, I was, you know, like, what is wrong with it? You know, that's selfish. Really, that was selfish of me because I was hurt that they were hurt and being so mean. You know, and you're hurt because <laughs> they're hurting you. And then the, the, um, the other day, someone I've known a long time, um, she responded to the office text, uh, remove, you know, and then when, um, and when my assistant called her the other day, she said, no, I don't want to do a consultation. You know, she didn't want to talk. <laughs> she don't want any text. She didn't want any, you know what I mean? Anything. And then I responded to her, you know, when I saw that, like, move, I said, I will remove you from this list. But just know, you will always be in my heart. Love always, JB. You know, I don't think, like, I know that I probably, that old me would have said, oh my God, what a mean person. But I know that God in me has been bringing, is creating a new reality that it won't hurt me to open my heart to her. You know, and she didn't respond. But I know that, you know, she's single and she's probably feeling alone. And she's, you know, I don't know what she's going through, you know, but she doesn't, you know, want. And I see, I've, I've been seeing that way too often. But that God will give me the opportunity to have this topic this week, you know, prove to me that what I said in my response to her was good. And, and, you know, I, it's, I've seen it, but I think that we should continue to encourage um, one another. And I think that most of you, I hope that you've been protected from that. But when you're talking about, I deal with, you know, sometimes hundreds of people a day, hundreds, between doing our classes and things, you know, I'm, you know that I know that it gives me additional exposure, but it also gives me additional opportunities to show love and to express love and to be forgiven, you know, and, and, and to not hold grudges and to let it go and to move forward. And it wasn't gonna push, push mine, but I was gonna have that one-on-one -on -one text that, hey, I care about you. I love you. Because I would hate for something to happen. And we had one of our members during COVID. She was living with her brother. And I had told her if she didn't feel safe in that environment, that she needed to get out. And he ended up killing her and then himself. What? A brother. Mm. So there are some, you know, there are some um, special situations going on 
And I don't think that this topic is, you know, coming to you or you responded to it or you're participating by accident because I think everybody has conflict in their life. If we weren't supposed to have conflict, then it wouldn't be in the word and God wouldn't have given Jesus the life that he gave him. But through the life of Jesus, we learn to do what? Resolve, resolve it, right? Yes. Yeah. But we're not supposed to move away from it. I think that too many of us are, you know, think that the, what we're supposed to do is avoid it. Have you seen that? Oh, you think? More so now. Avoiding it. Yeah, just, just avoid it. Avoid the conflict. Don't even worry about it. You know, she's, she's tripping. Just take her off and move it. Don't even worry about it. You know, don't, don't, don't say nothing. <laughs> but God said, no, say something. Say something, because you don't know what that person is going through. And so many times now, JB, this is Cheryl, yes, um, the internet and social media, people avoid talking. Yep. So they put everything, when a conversation can resolve things so quickly, That's right. people don't even know um, phone numbers anymore, because everything is either is a text, or you know, some or, or social media, but even the tonation in your voice That's when you right. just talk to somebody or respond personally. That's right. It can resolve so much because so much about conflict is is misinformation. That's right. Misunderstanding. That's right. And a lot of times, like you're so right, because I was thinking about that situation. I know that she feels. She doesn't want to tell me about how she has spent a lot of her money, you know, and that it's gone down a lot because she's taken a lot out. But that's, you know what I mean? That's okay. That still doesn't mean that you matter. You still matter to me. Mm -hmm. But, but a, lot, a lot of times, you know, people are making these things up in their mind that, you know, she doesn't want to talk to me and I, I, she's, you know, whatever, whatever things you're making up in your mind, they're yes. not. Check mm -hmm. yourself first. That's why he instructed us to check out the plank yes. in my eye. You know what I mean? Because what they're dealing with is nothing compared to what you got going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So who are we to judge? I feel that that is more powerful that word on checking out the you know the plank in your eye than the sawdust in another is more powerful than he without sin cast the first stone mm -hmm. because that means equally important they're saying similar you know they're saying the same thing mm -hmm. but sometimes when you connect the sin to it you know people don't think but sometimes with um, the plank in your eye and the sawdust in the other, that it's not about sin. It's just that you're, you know, why are you being so judgmental? Why are you being so selfish? Mm -hmm. Why are you being so, you know, so it's deep because a lot of times you think, well, I'm not a sinner. I'm not doing that. You know, I'm not, you know, that if, if God says we all sin, then we all sin. So, and we got to check ourselves there. If you think that, you know, you're not a sinner because you're not doing a particular thing that you used to do. That doesn't mean you, we all have things to build on. We mm -hmm. all need to, even if it's just that we need to be more graceful, more merciful to one another and stop judging. Yeah. But that, but definitely. So we have to remember also that often the people who need the love are the ones that in reality, we see them as, they don't even deserve this, mm -hmm. but give it to them anyway. That's give because hurt, hurt people hurt people. Yeah, yeah. And hurt people can heal people too. True. You know, so, cause, so a lot of hurt people listen to that and they go, well, yeah, that's why I hurt them. Cause I'm a hurt, I'm a hurt, I'm hurt, you know? But that's not, you know, that's not biblical. It doesn't say in the word, hurt people, hurt people. You know what I mean? That's just something that we've adapted because of the selfish nature of the world. 
But hurt people need to get out of their own space, you know, and realize that you ain't got no issues. You think you hurt, so you hurt somebody else. And he said, look, you got a plank. You, you, don't, you got issues. You have issues. Stop being so selfish. Stop being so proud. The conflict started with you. What are you saying, God? What are you saying? I'm a nice person. The conflict started with you. Oh, that's scary. Mm. That's scary. And then you got to love yourself anyway. Yes. And then you got to love yourself anyway. A conflict started. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm, mm. That's so sad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> take, you know, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Mm. He, will be, he will be there with us. He will. What causes fights and quarrels among us? Don't they just come from your desires that battle within you? Mm. They come with you. They're in us. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen, you know, people and they'll be like an obvious problem. And everybody around that person will not tell the person to check themselves. Mm. Like, what can you do to make this better? What can you do to turn this around? And the person who might end up being me that comes in and says, well, why don't you look at this? Why don't Mm -hmm. you look at that? Like gets attacked Mm -hmm. because I'm giving a godly response versus a worldly response. I'm deciding that I want to be right with God than being right with the world. Mm. So just know that because, you know, because of that, because of your relationship with God, like you're going to have to accept the blessing of it. Accept the blessing of it. It'll be a private. It's going to be a private blessing. It's a private blessing but it is necessary and they believe it. And eventually they will come, you know, it will come to you. It's that what we, what we leave behind, what we separate ourselves away from on earth will, will be, will not be a part of our life on heaven. So if we decide that we want to have peace on earth, then you're going to have peace always. If you decide you want to have conflict all the time, mm-hmm. then you're going to have conflict mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That mm. self-fulfilling prophecy, as they call it. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. That's in James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Mm. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for our precious family. Thank you for your protection and love towards us. Dear God, fight for us. Help us to be humble, Lord. Help us, not just towards you, but also help us, Lord, to be humble to others. But even when we are interacting with others, we know it's important to be humble. Help us to do that. Even though we might not agree all the time, Lord, help us to be humble ourselves and listen to each other, even when we are having different views. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, y'all. Thank you. Before we go, uh, JB, I have a challenge i'm i'm having a little difficulty yeah um going back to what you earlier said about resolving conflict you know you try to do it one-on-one um and then maybe you bring in some others as witnesses Mm. then you take it to the church Mm. that's where i was kind of like i don't see ever taking it to the church for me right because to me the biggest gossip capital of the world I've experienced has been in church. 
Another. So help me, anybody who's listening, walk me through how taking it to the church ends up helping to resolve a conflict. And I think that also when we say take it to the church, we have to remember the times that they had yeah. then. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm thinking, that yeah. the church is different now than the, than the way that it was back then. That's what I'm thinking is the yeah, reason why I'm thinking day. maybe to when I would say church, I'm thinking maybe just bring it to a minister. Okay, a pastor. I gotcha. You know, All right. Okay. Not just maybe for counseling not just or something. A, no, not just a minister. It needs to be somebody you trust. I know that's right. Thank you. A minister that you trust and respect. And it yeah. and it could be so and, and I was thinking along the same lines. Be a minister, a deacon, a deaconess. Mm. But somebody that that's trustworthy that will that you know, yeah, that you have a relationship with. That's right. Okay. At the same time, in a way, if you do that when you have a conflict with someone and they know, oh, that person liked them, then that's going to be too. That's not going to help with the resolution. Well, hello. Can you hear me? I was going to say, as you as you sisters are saying, just add a number. The church is those who have the faith, and so it could be a several, you know, that several that several um, people who uh, some of whom quote like you just said may be known to like you or whatever, but then just a range of people who are truly faithful. And I think it means the church doesn't have to mean the physical body. I mean the physical somebody from the physical. Gotcha. building it could Got be a it. set of people remember um sure i was talking one sunday about um jesse jackson was saying <laughs> that his mother got pregnant at 15 mm -hmm. and um they made her go towards the church and apologize mm. for being pregnant by a married man which would now he would be arrested for doing this he the, the man was never addressed mm. And they made her, um, you know, um, basically apologize. That is not in the, you know, that's not in the word. I guess, yes. That's the scarlet letter. <laughs> you know, see, this is not in the word. Like, how are you going to, you know, I mean, what, what, what pattern were they following? Like, did she meet one-on-one -on -one with her mother? And then she said, I don't care what you think, mom. You know what I'm saying? No. Mm -hmm. They did that to humiliate her. Yes. That's a different intention. Um, you know, and I also had a male friend that he and his wife were having conflict and they brought him in and her into the church. It was originally her church. And because of their conflict, they put him out of the church and say he couldn't come in anymore. He was like a trustee or deacon or something. And um, they wouldn't let him come in, in anymore. And um, that wasn't, that wasn't like, you know I mean? That's not, Ma that's not Matthew. That's not what's in that word. Mm -hmm. So what people do is they take out for their own convenience, what's going to work for them, mm -hmm. you know, and then they just use it and they create even more conflict. So now he's a conflict with everybody in that church. Yes. Well, sister, thank you for, you know, when you said the church are those who have the faith. I feel so much mm. better about being able to follow the word in terms of taking it to the church than my initial reaction, which was like, oh, mm -mm, that's the last place. So thank you all for helping me um, in, in that regard. And I would hope that you wouldn't have to get to that level. You see, that's like level three. You know, because first it's just one-on-one -on -one, and then it's with witnesses. But the one thing with, I can understand and taking it then to someone you trust through God is because many times that person can rise the conflict, rise the issue above whatever is the conflict mm -hmm. so that everyone is now thinking higher order and the conflict doesn't even matter anymore. So I can, I can definitely recognize the, the impact of that. Yeah, the selfish part comes out, right? Yes. The, self, the selfish, your own selfish part. Yes. You know, and, and then you get back into a place of humility. Yes. Um, but it doesn't mean, like, this is just resolving the conflict. 
this doesn't mean that that has to be your best friend for the rest of your life, right? Right, you right. Just, you just don't want to be um, in conflict with them. Yes. That's right. You want them to know your position, why that, why it, your, your view on why it happened. And do you see their view on why it happened? I, I, I remember one time I um, had a good friend and she was a hairstylist. And she did my hair and she put it in rollers and she, she, she did some sort of color and it had like, so it made my hair blonde on the bottom and dark on the roof. And I don't know what she did. And then I kept calling her back and calling her back. Like, what is wrong with my head? I have TV tomorrow. And it was like red on the bottom and dark. I, she made a mistake with some chemical. And um, so and I don't know where, why it would be anything lightning. You know what I mean? Like, well, it was like, you know how you have to, some peroxide or something was in my head. So then I just went, I just, I was desperate. And I went to um, hair cuttery and then the, <laughs> the lady at hair cuttery, nobody black was in there. They, everybody black said, oh, I can't do natural hair. I can't do natural hair. I can't do natural hair. So then there was this white lady who said, I, I can do your hair if you just wait. Isn't that something? Mm, wow. So the black lady, the white lady was willing to do the natural hair. And then the, um, she said, I don't know how anything like this could happen without it being intentional. You know? mm. So I went with it. I believed it. Mm. I was so mad at her. Like, you know, and she wouldn't, the, more, the worst part was that she wouldn't answer my calls. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was like calling and desperate and calling and desperate. And she asked me to leave her salon. She said, don't take the rollers out. So that's what made me kind of suspicious. Like, mm -hmm. why would she not have wanted me to? I never left the salon without my rollers out. She mm -hmm. said, leave the rods in. I don't know. So I feel like today, having had this discussion, I would have handled it differently. Mm -hmm. But after that, I, I found it really hard to trust her. Wow. I'm not at conflict with her. Mm -hmm. I just don't trust her anymore. Mm. You know, but I have to let it go. Like I have to, any of those type of things that we have, we have to let it go while we're here on earth. We don't want those type of burdens. You know what I mean? Going with us. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. But that's interesting. You know, it's just interesting. We think about like different things through life, like and how if we we just bring them to the word, like just talk one on one. But if they won't allow you to talk one on one, and then mm -hmm. also when we're talking about the word and the word as a form of resolution, that's only if it's the other person follows the word too. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with someone in the world, you might have to just resolve it in your own mind. You know what I'm saying? And move on. Yeah. They're not going to take this godly approach to resolving it. They're not going to answer the phone. They're not going to reply. They're not going to have a meeting with you. So he said, when that is the case, then you allow them to be at peace. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's what I did. I didn't try to get my money back. I didn't try to address you. Know what I'm saying? It was like, right. I'm dancing. Right. I just right. let it go. God mm -hmm. feels, you know, God will give us the money back. But God will make it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I love y'all. Love you back. Thank love you, you back. so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. <laughs> Thank you. Wednesday night, don't forget. You're welcome.